I feel privileged because VIT is such a great university and I getting a chance to speak to its students is a kind of honor for me. I'm happy for this. May I know how many of you are from third year or second year? I mean, not the first year students, but second and third year students. Anyone other than the first year students? Okay. And how many of you are from first year who recently joined? Okay. Because students who have, uh, you know, uh, gone to second year, third year, definitely you know very well about what is Constitution of India. I even think that most of you will be knowing most of the articles of Constitution of India. But friends, see, Constitution of India is not just there as a document. It is there as a life throughout India. For example, today we all gathered here. This freedom of gathering, right to gather, you know, comes under Article 19, one of the fundamental rights. Similarly, right now I'm able to speak. I have the right to speak, right to express my opinions, which also comes under Article 19 of fundamental rights. Any take any organization, any body, any authority, any government, you know, any association, whatever, whatever they do, will all come under Constitution of India directly or indirectly. So what we do, the way we live, how we act, everything is directed by Constitution of India. Friends, see, in your family, if you have to take a decision, maybe your, your, your father, your mother, you, siblings, whatever, to take a single decision, you will discuss, deliberate. Sometimes there may not be consensus, right? For example, you want to do law. Your dad may want you to do some medicine, somebody else may want to do engineering, siblings want to do something else. We have to discuss. We have to come to consensus. So when it is difficult to bring only few members in a family to come into consensus, just think about bringing 140 crore people of India or to a common consensus, accepting common principles and rules, common philosophy and following it. I would say it is really a humongous task. See, USA may be largest and oldest democracy in terms of size, but in terms of population, definitely India is the largest democracy. And these many people are being directed by Constitution of India. So, don't look at Constitution just as a subject in your book. Don't just try to remember the articles for examination. If you do that, I would not say you really become a good lawyer. A good lawyer is somebody who sees Constitution in every act and walk of your life. Everything it is in, in the news. For example, today's newspaper. In today's newspaper, I think uh, uh, one of the major articles in most of the papers is about the collegium system. First year students also, I'm trying to keep it simple, so the first year students also can make something out of it. See, second, third year students may be knowing very well, the judges of high court, their transfers or promotion to Supreme Court are decided by a collegium in Supreme Court. Collegium means Chief Justice of India and the four senior most lawyers of India together sit down and they take a decision about transfers within high courts, appointments and promotions to Supreme Court. And this process is a very opaque process, opaque. It's not transparent. They no need to explain to anybody why they are choosing so, so, you know, such a person for Supreme Court, why they are transferring this person within a very short time. They no need to tell anybody. Now, all these newspapers, enter the media, definitely criticizes this one. You might have, if, if anybody have a habit of reading newspapers, you have to read papers, friend. Newspapers is the only way through which you can apply the Constitution of India, application of the Constitution of India. So, one of the tasks I would give today, in the next one month, what are articles you're reading from newspaper? What is relevant to you from a constitutional point of view? Now, as any graduates here, I mean undergraduates, okay? Any undergraduates here, you know why young people are always liked by government, anybody? Because you come up with innovative ideas. Now, what is the alternative for the collision system? As of now, many models are proposed, but there is no really good model which is better than collision. It's easy to criticize that collision is not a good model, but what's alternative? So, innovation. You know, innovation is not just in science and technology. According to me, innovation, science and technology can only help us, you know, in the technical growth. 
but innovation in social, legal, and political thought will empower us as a civilization. For example, the basic structure doctrine, how many of you at least heard that? Base structure. Okay. So basic structure doctrine, I don't want to discuss about it right of now, but the basic doctrine has come out of the thought of a single person. A person at one point of time, a judge, before that judge actually a few lawyers spoke about it. So it came out of a single person's mind and that right now is defending our constitution from last several years, almost 40 years. Similarly, for example, tomorrow one of you may have an innovative thought. It may completely change the course of how we think, how we act. So please consider yourself not as machines who will learn from the books. Consider yourself as young energy who can think innovatively. Whatever thought comes to your mind, don't just think whether this thought is useful for an exam point or no. Enjoy the thoughts in your books, what you're reading in the law books or whatever class you're listening. Any new ideas, innovative thoughts you get. These days you have social media. You can use social media, in fact, to spread your thought, spread your ideas. In fact, I would say one of the responsibilities of a law student is to spread awareness to public about the laws. One of the largest lies, of course, Constitution of India. For example, many people do not know their rights, for example. You can spread the awareness in your community, neighborhood. For example, you know, any doctors who are doing MBBS, what do they do? Of course, they treat the patients, you know, give curative medicine, but they develop awareness in the community, in surroundings, you know, how to take care so you will be healthy. See, doctor's responsibility is not just to treat patients professionally, but also raise awareness about health. For example, police officers there. Police officers' only duty is not just to control the crime, but to raise awareness about how, in the more public, more public, how to avoid yourself from the criminals. For example, when you see the Khaki movie, right? Khaki. Uh, who's the hero? Uh, Karthik. There, you know, there is a team of those, uh, you know, some Bihar, Rajasthan, roadies who come into Chennai. So there is awareness in the public, how you should save yourself. Similar, for example, these days, there are several loan applications, loans. Yesterday also in the paper, we heard that Vishal Gunya APS was talking how people should avoid these loan apps, how you can, they can actually cheat you. So, just like how police people's responsibility is to generate awareness, I would say the young lawyers, or maybe undergraduates also, students like you, shall try to spread what you're learning. See, spreading what you're learning actually helps a lot of people die indirectly. So try to do that. Try to use social media. If you have some innovative thoughts, spread across, connect some camps with help of your professors or dean somewhere, raise awareness. For example, I would say there are many people in India who today also are getting exploited just because they do not know their fundamental rights. Do you know that? For example, take it as basic level, Article 21A, right to education, many do not know about this. So many child labor are being exploited, their parents are being exploited by many industries and companies. And if this person actually knows about this right, not the child, at least the child's parents knows about this right, definitely they can escape from it, right? Similarly, awareness can bring happiness in lives of several people. Can anybody here give me an example? Any example? From childhood till today, any person you have seen whom you can save just by giving awareness to the person about his or her rights. Anybody? Have come across somebody around your neighborhood? or some college, where do you think that I can help this person just by giving awareness about the law, not exactly constitution of India, fundamental rights, any law. If this person knows about this law, this person can be saved. Anything like that, friends? I'll wait, I'll wait for even 3-4 minutes also. But I want at least someone to just talk about that. Because law is not just intellectual deliberation, it's a common sense, I to be law is common sense. Yeah. Uh, What's your name? My name is Kavya. Okay. My name is Elizabeth. I'm a student of the Hollywood Science Library. Me too, Harais. 
So at that time she was like thin. So she thought to come to the house for like she wanted to be like a maid because of her family circumstances. But my parents said you can study like they actually put her in a school where uh, because it was a government school and uh, she got her education there afterwards. So oh, Jason, you have acted on that, right? Yes. You have acted on those. Yes. Very good. See, for example, let's say you have put her in the government school, good. Now her parents might have sent her to work because they want money. Maybe the money they are earning is not enough for them. So what do you think is the remedy for that? Okay, you have sent this girl to the school. But what your parents are earning, do you think it's sufficient for them or any of the parents are physically disabled or anything like that? In this situation, I'm asking you. Because I want you to tell me so others here can listen what you have done. Friends, see, every small act of us can be heroic. Heroism is not just beating some hard people with guns and swords. Heroism is spreading your knowledge even the smallest, slightest of knowledge to bring change in at least one person's life. Forget about the uh, entire nation. That, according to me, is a heroism. And anybody can be a hero. For example, in this case, actually, she may be a hero. Because let us say, in her place, somebody else is there who is not really caring about that uh, young kid's education. Definitely, she would not have gone to school, according to me. Okay, this is all. Kavya, right? That's it all. Good. Friends, see, Constitution of India, Constitution of India has fundamental duties also. For example, for the first year student, I can tell you, Constitution of India has got several parts. One part which you may be frequently hearing about is fundamental rights. Because that's what everybody speaks about in the media, outside. Everybody, I have the fundamental right to stand here, I have fundamental right to life. How can you arrest? Fundamental rights are mostly talked about. Because they are the rights given to the of the citizens of India. Similarly, fundamental duties are also there. Of course, fundamental duties were not there in the constitution initially when the constitution was uh, formulated and forced. It came only in 1976 by 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act. They added a new part in the constitution, part 4A. Actually, part 4 is a DPSP, Direct to Principal State Policy, which actually tells what government has to do, what government shall do to develop the nation, economically, socially, whatever. So, they just, part 4 is DPSP, right? So, they made part 4A as fundamental duty because they want to tell everybody that just like how government has responsibility towards the nation and public, everybody, every citizen of India also has responsibility. That is called fundamental duty. Each of you have a duty to perform, but this is not mostly talked about in the media or circles, whatever. Because there is a famous Telugu saying, for example, you might have heard this Maitu Kostanapuru Yetastaru, Me Mintu Kostanapuru Mage Estaru. Have heard this? This is a common mentality, of course. Most of us think like that. What we think is, what is government giving us? What is this college giving us? What is our family giving us? It's always about what we take. But you should also think about what you give to your nation, to your college, to your family. And that's what the Constitution of, Constitution of India clearly enshrined. Part 4a, Article 51a, Fundamental Duties. I would ask all of you to go home, read about these fundamental duties and question yourself how many of them are really following. And I sincerely believe that national development, we're talking about India, National development will happen not just because of DPSP or fundamental rights, but, but because of fundamental duties. In fact, if asked, I would say, if every citizen of India knows about their fundamental duties and performs them sincerely, the nation will develop, definitely grow more than what government can actually do. As he has believed, even 140 crore people, either the children or whatever, at least the educated people. See, forget about illiterates. I am not on illiterates. The literate people, for about literate also, at least the law graduates, uh, law undergraduates, whoever, at least you should know what are fundamental duties and start doing them. Because it is mentioned in the constitution of India, no? So, if everybody follows these things, India will grow as a nation. Can anybody in the class tell me a few fundamental duties? See, no need to frame the exact sentence mentioned in the Bayer Act of Constitution of India. You can just tell me the essence of spirit, what you understood about fundamental duties, one or two points. 
anybody? Something. Tell something. It can be wrong thing. It can be wrong also. Actually, they are nothing but some of the recommendations of Swaran Singh Committee. Actually, Swaran Singh Committee required like many things. But you know, at the time, the parliament has taken only few things. Just think, I want to know. Okay, if you do not know, guess. Guessing you can do now. See, knowing means you should have read that and tell me. But with your common sense, with your common sense, just guess what may be duty of every citizen of India. You are citizen of India, no? What is your duty? Tell me some two of the duties. I am asking you to guess here. It can come wrong also, it's okay. Guessing comes from common sense. And I would say constitution only come with common sense only. Enter constitution. Anybody can take a guess? What's your name? What is it? Ah, okay, Ishita, tell me. Very good. See, actually it is there. Constitution of India is clearly mentioned out of all the fundamental duties. Everyone should have the nature of brotherhood, irrespective of the caste, religion, race, gender, whatever. For example, think generally, do you consider everybody equal? in your college, school, society, or do you have a separate grouping of your caste? You will work more within the caste. You want to help your religion people only, people of your caste. Just think, I'm not asking you to ask this. Just think, really is everybody in this class considering the brotherhood with different religion, different language, different caste, or is the brotherhood confined to a religion or caste generally? You know, I think that some of us are really glorifying brotherhood within the region. It's called regionalism. Brotherhood within a caste called casteism. You know, brotherhood within religion also. Within religion. For example, I don't want to name, but all civil religion have the brotherhood within religion. And this is purely again as a fundamental duty. Like how she said, you have to engrave the fraternity. The brother is clearly mentioned in the Constitution of India. In the same, in the same uh, fundamental duty that she's mentioning, they actually added. Dignity of women shall be upheld by everybody. Are we really? Look at the advertisements. Advertisements, look at the movies. Look at the short films that you make. Or look at the comments you make. Or look at what you talk when you are with your friends. For example, group of girls, group of boys, sitting together, talking. Just, you know, make, just enjoy your time. Do you really uphold dignity of women? I'm just questioning this song. All of you shall question yourself like this. Are we doing these things or not? Okay? Okay, friends, now sit down, please come. See, now for example, when, uh, see, uh, as I told, I have, uh, I have done my graduation my IIT Madras. I was an engineering student and I worked in Deloitte, USA for a few years. My wife is an IRS officer. So actually, I had to come back to India mainly because of my wife only. At that point of time, I used to think that, you know, I should earn a lot of money by working in a large company. That was my thought, actually. But as my wife is in a good position, I have to come back. And here, the same company, same Deloitte, I used to work in India too. I have this passion of writing competitive exams. Right from the time I created my IIT JE exam, I generally love to write competitive exams, just as a fun whatever. And I have cleared certain exams. For example, one of the best exams I would say is for service, UPSC. And then, while talking to my friends who are already in the UPSC examination, or already in the civil services, who are already working as IAS, IPS, IAS officers, when I'm interacting with them, do you know what I felt? I felt that, other than lawyers and judges, civil servants really uphold the constitution of India. They are the people who actually have to enforce, enforce the constitution of India. Coming to enforcement, friends, a small homework for you. Homework is something which you can do, don't do. I'm just giving this all, okay? That's your choice. The homework is, note down important pieces of legislation, I mean acts, important laws or acts in India, which we are not really following. Not enforce, not implementing. For example, dowry prohibition act is there. Dowry prohibition. I do not know really how many in this class will marry without taking or giving dowry. I really do not know. But we all know there is an act like this. Dowry prohibition act, right? So like this, right? What I'm saying is there are several acts, laws, not only provisions of constitution, so acts and laws. I want you to just make a note of all those things which are not being enforced properly. At least which you are not, you have not accepted. For example, some people by themselves will not accept this uh, Dowry Provision Act. They have their own logic and reason for taking Dowry. And that logic is sometimes confusing also. They convince you. Like that, I want, this is homework. 
write down all the laws and acts, all provisions of the Constitution of India, which you think are not being implemented properly. First year, right? Then write down why do you think they are not being implemented? Though they are mentioned in the Constitution of India, though there is a machinery mechanism to enforce them, though there are punishments for that, imprisonment for that, still then, even then, why they are not being enforced? If you mention these reasons, in those reasons you will understand the logic of consensus. I told you, no? Consensus. Within your family also, what your mother does, father does, what you do, other families may not accept. Just within five, six members' family. So, entire nation, constitution of India, do you think you accept? Definitely, several provisions we do not accept. Definitely. Maybe because of our cultural constraints or our, you know, the upbringing or maybe the injustice done to us in our childhood, whatever the reason may be, that we have to find out. This, I would say, is a really important homework that you have to do today until you finish your graduation from here or post graduation from here. Every day. At least, what are we? Just think why we are not following this? Why we are not following the text? Why I am not doing it? Think like that. When you think like that, from there comes innovation. Friends, innovation always comes when you do not accept something. For example, some bus is going. If you just accept the bus and get into the bus, you cannot, you cannot innovate. But if you think why bus is going at this speed only, can I improve the speed? Then you can innovate. Similarly, all you people shall innovate. Within, for example, you never think that if I innovate something, can it be added to the constitution of India? No, it can be. Any idea is accepted today in the fast-growing world. Okay? So now, coming to the UPSC civil examination, friends. UPSC civil service examination is changing. It is choosing those kind of people who are very dynamic, who are smart. It actually stopped choosing the people who are extremely hardworking, not required actually. All you people, while doing graduation here, within this three, four years, can spend half an hour, one hour every day for UPS examination. Still, you can clear the examination by the time you come out of this college. Directly, you can take examination. For example, last year, one of our students, Gautami, who got a rank of 317. Right now, she's Telangana Cadre IAS. She got rank two years ago, training is all just now. She prepared for examination only for 10 months. Just 10 months. And I know several candidates who are preparing for UPS examination for almost like, you know, five to six years, but could not track. Why? It's not because those candidates who are working for five to six years not don't think they are not intelligent or hardworking. They are intelligent. They are hardworking. But somehow they miss the right direction. So today, as you know, I was also asked to talk about this examination. I would say what actually inspired me to train civil service, to train candidates for civil examination. See, one of my friends, Saika Dharma, an IAS officer to join the virtual batch, worked as a sub collector in Dodge Mandir. At the time, there was a flood early forecast, early warning, forecast, early warning of flood was there. And he, as a sub collector, has taken responsibility, he has built teams, he convinced the people living along the river and is able to evacuate them very quickly. For example, you can evacuate after three days also, but he has done within one and a half day. And immediately after the evacuation, first occurred in the place. So even if he was, he was late by two to three hours, it would have costed several lives in the Rajput surrounding areas. So just his decision, his action of only one and a half day, because he's spirited, hardworking, and he's upon his toes, and he feels that he's responsible to do this, he's able to save several lives. So I actually started thinking, which other job can actually give us an opportunity to save those many lives? Really? See, I would say a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer, everybody is important for the nation for development. But I felt that in civil services, your scope is larger. What you can do is do is larger. For example, in a tribal area in Srikakulam, in a tribal area in Srikakulam, have you heard what is maternal mortality rate? Anybody? MMR, maternal mortality rate. Can you tell me? You would have heard in newspapers, TV channels, in your 10th class, 9th class books. Maternal mortality rate. It actually calculates how many women die while delivering. Delivery. Friends, in India, see, you are, most of you are like allied people from good families. So in your families, in ninth month, when you get labor pains, you have seen people going to hospital, obviously. But in India, even today, 
Many deliveries are not institutional deliveries. Most of them happen in the home only. Without the supervision of a trained doctor, which leads to death. So in India, the death's maternal mortal rate is very high in India. Now, in the tribal area, MMR is very high. So now this NIS officer, what has he done? See, as I told you, anything is common sense. Anything is, according to anything is common sense. Simple, fundamental, basic one. We are the people who complicate, unnecessarily complicate that. Now, what he, now he thought that, okay, in tribal area, roads are not very great. If somebody gets the labor pains, and if it takes two hours, three hours, four hours, or ten hours to go to a hospital, obviously they will not go. For example, if you take ten hours to go to the hospital, will you go? On the way, what delivery happen? While going on the way itself. So what is done, you know, in the tribal government hospital, there are 20 ambulances, but all ambulances are in the hospital only. This is a large village, large uh, tribal area, single hospital, all ambulances are there in the hospital only. So if the ambulance has to go, pick them or come back, which is delayed. So what he has done is, these 20 ambulances he has distributed, he has taken the map of the uh, tribal area map, he distributed 20 ambulances into critical points. That means anybody in that village, in the, in the tribal region, anybody, if they get labor pains, ambulance will come within 15 minutes. 15 minutes. See, ambulance is the same only, no change, no additional investment, just the thinking, that's all. So, any ambulance will go to the bring them to the hospital. And within two years, he's able to reduce the maternal mortality rate 50%. And I think this actually gives a kick. You might have seen the movie Kick, right? Who's the hero? Not Kick 2. Kick 2 is different. The first Kick, right? Is a movie. In the movie, he says something, you see. He says that, uh, I have done some things in my life, but uh, nothing gave me a kick. But uh, when he saved some kid, but the direction is wrong, robbing is wrong thing, I don't uh, agree with it. But he does the robbery and he gets the kick, right? Like the friends, you have to get a kick constantly. What you have to do? If that's the last student also, it's five years, you have to get kicked, you know, sometimes. So for that, you have to do some kind of activities, you know, conduct some camps, do something social media, promote awareness, something. Without kick, what is the point of living? The just doing writing exams, coming to classes, by hurting the constitution of India. What is it? So I would say, you know, only those people who get the kick out of the law course or medical course, they do this kind of activities. They actually, I would say actually your dean is no such person. When I talk to your dean, previously also your dean said when I met, you know what he says, he has a passion, energy, enthusiasm. That is missing generally in most of the students across medicine, engineering, whatever. And I would say that is very important. If you are missing it, try to think why you are missing it. Now, then I decided that let me train candidates for UPSC examination. For UPSC, one of the you know uh, wrong thinking is that we have to go to Delhi to track UPSC, but the exam pattern has changed. Material really doesn't matter. Only guidance and mentorship matters. So I started it in Vijayawada and Hyderabad, and. Do you know what I did initially? I have written down the points, the main points, which is making students lose the examination. I did not focus on success. I focused on why students are failing the examination. For example, one of my students failed the examination. He's very intelligent, hardworking, but why he failed? One of the students is there. Why is she failed the exam? So I have written down some points of why students fail in the examination. I try to address those points. First point I observed is, Students overread. They read too many books. That's why they fail. So we designed a material, a combination of standard books, articles, few articles, newspaper, our own material, which is very limited, which can be prepared by anybody within 10 months. So the first obstacle I found, we addressed that. Second thing is faculty. For example, I would say Sneha Ma'am is a very good faculty because, you know, this young faculty have energy and they have innovation. Innovation. Generally, in your mind, we think the faculty is somebody who is like 65, 70, all experience, but no. Along experience, innovation comes with young people. So, what I what I have done is I have selected a team of faculty who some of them cracked the examination, but they did not create the IAS, IPS, IRS. They have got all the services. IRTs, IPOS, those people who came and joined our team. And some people who went who cleared films, mains, went to interview, missed it narrowly. So those people know what mistakes should not do. So I ensured that a team of faculty who are 
a combination of experience as well as anyone who understand the present exam pattern. Exam change. Second thing address. Because I feel responsibility, I felt it's responsibility as a civil service trainer to see what may go wrong and try to stop it. Of course, if you don't really work hard and you don't really study, you will fail whatever you do. You have to do that from, from other side of telling you. And then, friends, and mentorship. I found that everybody is unique. For example, friend, in this uh, auditorium, everybody cannot read your law books in the same way. Some people read fast, some people interpret differently, you know, interpretation differently, some people have more doubts, some people question more, some people accept what is there. Reading is different. Everybody is unique. And the best thing is, in your college, they are selecting limited candidates, 40 per batch, 60 per batch, so that they can mentor you personally. There's something I really appreciate, you know, about VAT. The teacher to student ratio, teacher to student ratio is very high. So now, what I've done is, we have kept mentors for every student. That means for every 10 students, your mentor will be there, mentor. The, the students can talk to the mentor, tell them, sir, I'm reading in this way. I'm taking more time, unable to write these answers, or unable to understand these things. So based on the problem of that student, the mentor will design a preparation strategy suitable for that student. I would suggest all of you to have even more preparation strategy, even for clearing the judge exams or preparing the law, city strikes, whatever. So mentorship is something you have done. And actually, I found that these methods we follow really helped many candidates get ranked in respect of their background. For example, some of our students are from rural villages, rural areas, telecom medium students who don't have good English knowledge. I know that most of them have got English knowledge, but most of the candidates who joined us previously don't have uh, good English knowledge. Their reading skills are poor, writing skills are very bad. I found that generally these law students, BA students have got very good writing skills, but engineers have very poor writing skills generally. Generally, not, uh, I'm not talking about everybody. So we have to improve writing skills also. But including skill also. It takes time to develop some skills. But though actually one of us one of our students, though he has taken more than three, four years, finally cracked the examination recently. Because it's a telemedic background and he's from rural area. The act the academy, the schooling he has uh, that he has gone through is not really up to the mark. So he has developed the skills. So he has taken some four years. But people like you who have got good reading skills, writing skills. So academic knowledge, access to information, you can practice the one or one of year, max in two years, if you really are focused on this. Focus on this. So, friends, those who want to prepare for whatever, you want to be a very good lawyer, very good judge, or very good civil servant, or whatever, you think about this, you read about them, read about civil servants, read about judges and the judgments, just out of passion. Don't read all the things in the curriculum. Even uh, when I'm talking to, when I was talking to your dean, sir, telling me that the curriculum is also not very rigid, flexible, innovative. So read what you like, judgments, read about some lawyers. For example, this movie is there, the Paul Tellers, what is that? He's a lawyer. What is it? Uh, okay, sir. For, for example, Wakil Saab is also an experience. See, entire Wakil Saab movie may not be very interesting, but some bits, some scenes in the movie of Wakil Saab or the Amitabh Bachchan movie is there, no same movie. So, or even Surya, Surya's movie is there, what is that? What is that? Jaydeem. So when you see this kind of movies, you understand the importance of lawyers. How a lawyer can take up, see, in your entire life, I'm not asking you to take up all these cases, but when you see these movies, you know, you get that, uh, Thing. Okay, as a lawyer, there's a lot to do. Because generally, most of the three movies no, show only police. Every year is police role. Beating the criminals, cracking all the cases, hit to do this kind of movies, police. But lawyer is also a hero, not just the police. But lawyers, they don't know how to show as a hero. No? These movies are shown real. I'm happy that more movies have uh, become. I would suggest you also to make a short film. VAT has got a very good compound, very good premises. You can make a nice short film of a lawyer. For example, the short film I will tell you is homework for you. You can do at least in the next four years, do this film, short film. You are a student of VAT, a third year uh, law student of VAT. Something happened outside when you gone home. So you you know you are not a uh, lawyer with permission. You cannot uh, uh, you know fight the a case in the court. But as a student, what have you done? Without going to the court, how are you able to win the case? You understand? Sometimes you can win the case by threatening the opponent, by telling who's in the movies they show now. 
when someone comes section 1 1 2 2 b section 2 and 3 this 10 sections then the award will run away right so make movies like that in such movies no will not only give you the necessary kick fun entertainment but it will also develop interest in your friends about the lot moves you have to become a lawyer these days people want the imagination the heroism to do anything okay so do that try to do that i found the heroism in civil service officers that is my personal thing ias officers what they do for example george george one of my friend 2013 batch ips officer tamil nadu cadre what is you know when he appointed as sp at the time from the government hospital three just born kids were kidnapped and it became difficult for them to track because chennai is a large city once the baby is taken they can go anywhere where can you search for them so he has taken help from different departments had a strategy planning within 24 hours they stopped all the choke points exit points and they really followed 24 plus those 24 hours nobody ate nobody slept the entire team is on their foot you know and on the toes i mean on the toes and they were able to crack and they were able to find the baby's back of course government hospital generally parents are poor and poor parents when they miss their uh, just born kids they cannot really fight for it a very rich person's kid if is gone is different but poor people know so most of them don't take the case also but he felt his responsibility to save them and he worked maybe if i have to make a movie on that thing i can make it three also i do not know but you know but that is a good thing for making a movie and that actually gave him kick george george his name is george george right but was only my classmate my friend he cracked the case the game happens so i decided that we have to produce more civil services more civil service i mean people are looking for those people who are from a middle class background or more like who think that i cannot take the examination difficult for such kind of people also i want to tell that you can take the examination i want to motivate them. that's why we generally keep this kind of lectures in my academy also sarachandra rice academy i invite some young ias ips officers senior bureaucrats to talk but really i will tell them please tell them about the cases you have done tell them about any hero cats you have done because motivation is not required when when i see a crowd of students no group of students no i don't really expect a lot of knowledge knowledge can be gained in any day of reading a book energy motivation to do something there's an attraction i would say many will say scientists are those who have a lot of knowledge no i would say these people who have passion and motivation to do something they want to innovate their knowledge will be less actually similar to become a good lawyer you know to get means you have to get very good marks i'm saying but you should have the passion to fight for cases fight for justice you should have that develop that thing why all of you join law college <coughs> to fight cases or to become a judge you know so develop the passion for that energy for that motivation that's required for you okay it can be taken from movies books whatever now friends if you look at the syllabus for upsc examination why are you really upsc you know first thing it is expected from me as a as a upsc trainer civil exam trainer expected from me second thing is i would say you can prepare for the examination very easily within the next few years and crack the examination see if you see upsc syllabus no upsc syllabus is completely 6th to 12th class short that's all 6th to 12th class short not even graduate level also geography history polity economy environment very basic why is this syllabus so basic because though the questions are difficult questions are application based every question can be answered in this examination just by using 6th to 12th class basic knowledge of social studies so they want candidates who have the basic knowledge of history economy polity to become bureaucrats then they are not looking for you know masters post doctors see post doctors required for professors because they have trained the candidates in depth but since it is not that for example history if you know history and art and culture anyone tell me why history is important i think in your uh, law also some history will be there historical underpinnings of constitution of india historical back of constitution of india for example pitts act how from pitts act we learn how the british indian acts colonial acts are made what from those acts also we have done we are taking a lot of things we are we are inspired from the british indian acts also okay now uh, tell me tell me why history art and culture is important for a bureaucrat an ias officer for a judge whatever why just guess 
I love students who guess. Telling from books is boring. Guessing is very interesting. Because guessing can be right or wrong. From books you have to tell character story. Why history is important? I will point you. You tell me. Do you think history is important? Generally, think. Do you think history is important? I, I, I generally should not have pointed, but generally I want to ask him. Okay. If you are not okay, then maybe uh, you. You also understood, okay. <laughs> you? Yeah. See, you are looking at history in the first row. Anyway, yeah, tell me. Why history, art and culture? Why should we learn at least basics of history, art and culture? Why? Very good. Next, another points. That's a good point. Very good point. What is your name? Shai Shri. Very good. Then next one. Very good. See, well, for his selling, we shall learn about freedom fighters because you know what he means by that. He means that today we are living in a happy, independent India. We are all happy. We have freedom to do anything. But before our independence, what was the condition? And when freedom, freedom fighters fought for independence, they sacrificed them. See, freedom fighters sacrificed their lives now. Why they sacrificed it? For their happiness or the happiness of the next generation? For us all, you know. So when they have sacrificed their lives for freedom, they have some spirit, you know. They have some values, ideals, you know. They thought that India should stand on those values, you know. So now, only when you know that importance. See, seeing RRR movie is not enough. RR movie is seeing the graph is not enough. Somebody is putting their life at stake, not for their advantage, advantage next generation. The legend of Bhagat Singh, who is there now? Legend of Bhagat Singh. Who was the hero? Who is the hero? Ajay Devgan. All of you see the movie, Legend of Bhagat Singh. Okay? I have seen the movie M.K. Gandhi, the English movie. Actually, he got the... Which place he got? Oscar. He's got Oscar. See, what's that movie? See, history is important because you, you should have the emotion. Freedom fighters have done this for us. So we have at least, uh, we should, our responsibility, we have to at least ensure that. So history is important. Art and culture is important because you should know the culture of India, the various art forms of India. Only then you can feel happy of being in India. Only then you can preserve the heritage of India. Do you know that one of the fundamental duties of uh, Indian is to preserve heritage of India, architecture of India, to preserve environment of India, ecosystem of India. Yeah, that's your homework. Your homework is you have to uh, read the fundamental duties and question whether they're doing it. Second homework is you have to write down all the acts and laws, why they are not being implemented. Second homework. Third homework is short film. I think third homework many of them want to do, right? But third homework is very important. You have to do, see, when you see movies, you get the creative, create energy now. Don't get the creative energy day. See, a good college, I want to give a good college something which will provide a platform to show your creativity energy. And VN is a good college in that aspect. They have created a good platform where you can show creative energies. Whatever, you can be uh, giving a speech or making a movie, or writing an exam, whatever, or acting as a judge, as a lawyer. Debates, discussions. Debates, discussions are very important. My fourth homework to your class. See, I know this is not a lecture, but the homework is, in the next few years, I know all of you read Constitution of India, but please read Debates of Constituent Assembly. It's called Constituent Assembly Debates. Because you know old Ambedkar, I know this. Ambedkar is a towering personality. So towering personality that he towered all the other candidates of uh, Constituent Assembly. But there are many other people also. Debate. Friends, debate is a very interesting, important thing. When you don't accept something, you should debate. You should not fight for them. You should fight against them. Debate, discussion, deliberation. I would say a good law student, a good lawyer, or a good law student, somebody who has that energy for debating, discussion, deliberating. Patiently. Never think that all oh, your point is correct. Accept others' points. Accept criticism. That can be developed by reading the constituent debates. Now, what is constitutional assembly debates? Anybody? Tell me something. You can tell us also, also, but tell something. What do I mean by constituent assembly debate? First of all, what is constituent assembly? I know many of you know, but you are not interested to tell that. Because if, you, if I tell, I may make a small mistake, or my friends may think yeah, I am trying to be hero, something like that. But nothing like that, friends. No, sorry. 
See what he said is he is telling constituent assembly is assembly of people who actually made a constitution. How they made a constitution? All of them discussed, it, debate, debated, criticized each other. Finally, what that came out of that widely accepted consensus that became the constitution of India. Or you will not know who is it. What is that? Very good. What is your name? Sandy Jackson. We gave him the answer. Sir, now, so friends, I have to save time also. Yeah. About eight more minutes because you know I was asked to stop at around three thirty so that there will be some doubt session. But I found that doubts may not be there in this class mostly, so I tried to reduce the uh, question. Okay, <laughs> or maybe I'll give some time for doubts and then again we'll talk about something. Okay, because see the point is most of you are like new first years for most of first years, so just now started off. So first of all, you should know what is constitution. Before you are at the assembly, so you know this. By the time you actually, brother, it's a slow progression. First year, second year, third year, you will imbibe all those things, friends. But no more. Again, telling you, it's not the letter of constitution that you have to buy. Heart, spirit of constitution. For example, if you take me, I also don't have a complete spirit. I should develop. It's constant development. Spirit, spirit of constitution. For example, about the issue of untouchability, what is spirit of it? What is untouchable? First of all. Untouchable different stuff you do not know. So these things you have to research, Google search, talk to friends, discuss, deliver whatever. I told you about this untouchable because three days ago there was an act of untouchable in UP. It came in the news, but I don't think it's right back from discuss about that. But you, but you research about that, think about that. Okay, enjoy this course. It's very interesting. Every article, every act, every law you read, it came out of experience. Every law, for example, I told you about anti-dowry. Do you know why I told you about dowry prohibition? Because you can't do this. You can talk very well about the dowry prohibition act. It came out of an experience of dowry only. No, if any act comes out of an experience, so you should understand the experience to appreciate the law. You can appreciate the law. For example, the dowry marriage act was there. Ah, the dowry marriage act. Each of these are the dowry marriage act that is different. But before that, before that came, that is British Act. Before it has come, what are the things? What what the things widows have to undergo? What are the various kinds of harassment they have to undergo? Uh, there are some short films, movies on that. Here, for example, about child marriage, widow marriage. Have you seen? Have you read Kanya Sulkam? Kanya Sulkam. Read that. It's a very interesting. Kanya Sulkam movie also was made, but I I think that you are addicted to the graphics effects. We are effects, so you cannot see the whole movies. Okay, what what was if you see for after twenty minutes you want to find something like that, but Kanya Sulkam may not have that. But try to watch the movie, okay, or try to watch the documentary Kanya Sulkam. See or read about that. See you understand the experience of these widows in the or Sati, the experience. Then you can appreciate the law. I do. I am telling really only about the major things, but there are some minor acts, minor laws which you appreciate. So, as a law student, as a law student, you have to understand the debate, the experience, the background to appreciate the law. Okay. In UPSC civil examination, again I am jumping. You know they make some movies where they jump between two stories. Like they again jump into UPSC friends. UPSC is one of history, you know. History syllabus is ancient, medieval, modern history with a With more focus on independent India's freedom struggle, more questions will be asked on that. And world history, only the recent world history, Industrial Revolution, American Independence, French Revolution, not the ancient medieval world history. These are very interesting. These are there in the school syllabus. This is one of the syllabus points for uh, UPSC examination. Second is economy, Indian economy. World economy is right, but Indian economy majorly. In economy, in agriculture, industry, service sector, GDP of India, trade, trade of India, banking sector, economy is very important. Now tell me, the first year you, who is trying? Yeah, tell me why economy or economics is important for a lawyer, judge, or bureaucrat, whoever. Why is important? 
See, if you don't want to tell, you can say no, 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 no. If you don't want to tell, say no, don't feel shy. Don't tell, right? Okay, you? Tell me quickly. No, very good, see? You want to tell why economy is important? Means, by learning economy, by learning economy, Indian economy, what can you do? How it is helpful to you as an IAS, IPS officer, as a judge, whatever? Why you should you about Indian economy? I'm talking about basics, not uh, MA economics. Basic economy. In school, you have gone, you know, school. Do you remember economy you studied in 10th class? 9th class? See, 10th class, don't remember, 9th class, office won't remember. I'm just asking. But you should. 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th is economy. Read those books just like this. The very important economy. As a lawyer also, as a judge also, whatever, very helpful for you. While reading the law, constitution of India, if you have some economic knowledge, you know, your interpretation will be great. Really, interpretation will be really great. Some of the DPSPs are related to the Finance Commission of India in the Constitution of India. We will read some articles Constitution of India. If you work in the economy, you, know, you can appreciate better. Friends, you should learn basics of all subjects, but in depth only on one subject. So, anybody in the last ranges, I think last ranges people are mostly the seniors, right? <laughs> First years, huh? Faculty, oh, sorry, really sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> because I thought you were like fourth year, fifth year of law, something like that. Actually, you, I would say it's a compliment because you are looking younger to me. Okay. And so, see, see the economy, you know. Economy, <laughs> six to two, six to the economy will teach you how India can develop economically. What are the reasons India is unable to develop economically? The problems in agriculture, you should know about farmers, friends. Farmers is 60% of India's farmers only, or 53% population wise. GDP was 16% only, GDP is over 16% agriculture, but population wise. So, a large amount of people in India are dependent on agriculture. Don't you think you should know at least basics of agriculture, agricultural problems? Tomorrow you take up a case. <laughs> see, the joke is over, okay? You have to move on. In, in, see, you have to learn to move on. For example, that's very important, I'll tell you about it. Now see, my friends, agriculture, only when you know problems of in the agriculture sector, you can understand better how to deal with the cases. You can understand constitution better. See, constitution of India was framed at the time by keeping in mind the poor people, most of the farmers, agricultural laborers, or you know, downtrodden people, or socially backward people, economically backward people. So it's very important for you to know about that. And also, for example, you should know, in economy, agriculture is one thing. Second, MSMEs, medium, small, micro enterprises. MSMEs are most run by the local people, the, the rural people, village people, cottage industries, not the leave the medium enterprises, micro. So you should learn about that economy, the rural economy of India. You know what Gandhi said? What Gandhi said? Rural economic growth, rural economic growth shall be the foundation of India's economic growth. Of course, the Nibiru's plan and Mahabharata's plan were different, but Gandhi actually talked about cottage industries. So, even as a lawyer, judge, whatever, see, it is responsibility as a literate person, educated person, responsibility that in India, what is a major problem of agriculture, ESM, MSMEs, cottage industries. See, the, the large industries may be giving employment to more people or uh, generating more revenue, but quarter industries is giving livelihood to many people. You should know about that. It is there in your 10th class book, 9th class book, 11th class books. Your 6th homework. I know first five homeworks you forgot. Fact, I also don't remember what first I gave, but I remember them discuss with friends. The 6th homework is 11th class, into first year. 11th class are talking about CBSE. 11th class NCRT book is there called Indian Economic Development. Read that book. It's very important. According to me, every undergraduate in India should read that book. Just like how they say, you know, this novel you have to read, very important novel. Dabu Sikod, everybody has to read Dabu Sikod. Like then I would say, Indian Economic Development, 11th class NCRT textbook, purchase it. All not only read the book, very important. You should understand the economy. That is very important. UPS exam also. If you observe UPS exam in syllabus like this only, very fundamental. The geography. Why you should know about the geography? You should know about the floods. You should know about the terrain, the soil, about the monsoon, Indian rainfall, geography, about the scarcity of water, the various water bodies you should know, the climate water study, 
about the oceans, so that we get extra energy from the oceans. We should learn about population studies, geography. These are all very fundamental things, very interesting things. See, somehow in Andhra Pradesh, in Telangana also to some extent, it is made to think that science and maths are the superior subjects, very poor subjects. Are you a bright student? You go for a BPC, MPC, become an engineer doctor. You are not a bright student, come for BA, BCOM, BCL, whatever. Complete wrong thinking. See, friends, actually, because of that kind of thinking, students develop interest in that, uh, you know, physics, chemistry, maybe slightly boring, I don't know, physics, mathematics, they develop interest. But you have developed interest in geography, economy, politics, short studies. You can develop that interest only when you can apply it. Mathematics is applying the formula, you know. That's why I'm loving it. Physics also is very interesting. Frankly, I also love physics more than any other subject. But keep them in a part. How do you apply geography for development, real life? How do you apply economy? How do you apply history? That you'll understand by reading those things. Now you'll understand. When you are in school, you will understand. Might not have understood because in school also, teachers really may not spend time in the application part of geography history. History means they'll slap you if you don't remember the dates. They'll give you less marks if you don't remember some names of what person. That's all maximum. But now you came to a position where you are, you are all law undergraduates. You know, studying law is BA, BA, BBA, whatever, right? So now it's time that you go back, revisit your school day social. Read them. Very important. Don't leave them. Okay? This is economy, geography, history, polity. This is all. Polity means law. Most constitution of India. The largest law of India. Law of the land. Constitution of India. Polity. Read. I suggest you, again, telling you really, before reading the standard law books that the professors are suggesting you, go back and read those school days books. Seventh class, the party book. Social economic life of India. Democracy. Ninth class book. Tenth class book. 11th class is a book called as uh, Indian Constitution at Work. 11th class book, very interesting book. 12th class, they are all, they are all, you know your level in fact. 12th class book, Contemporary World Politics. And politics, uh, another book is Politics of Indians and Independence. Friends, read those books. You will hardly take only, you will hardly, you will hardly take only one day to read that book. You are at a level where you can just, you can do that very easily, that book. Very basic books there, but read that. Get that basic essence, fundamentals. Then you will appreciate, understand these law books very well. I would say great lawyer is somebody, a great judge is somebody, or great advocate is somebody who has strong fundamentals and whose emotions are all fundamentals. Your emotion should be there, there. If you are not emotional about those things, no, you can never enjoy it. If you are emotional about those things, history of India, economy of India, quality of India, okay? Then disaster management. For example, in YouTube, you can see, if you get time, Internal security. I have taken a class on internal security, a seven hour session. When you're free, you go to the internal security. Just type search in the IS Academy, internal security, get it. There, I try to cover entire subject in six hours. There, I tell you the various internal security challenges of India in way money laundering, terrorism, maxillism, you know, social crimes, the ICT uh, fraud, you know the border management. So these things will be interesting and it is a very important topic of civil examination. So civil self examination is based on these things only. Inter security, disaster management, economic policy. So it's very easy to, easy for you to prepare and for a law student it's easier because law students will be very strong in that acts, laws, current affairs, polity, these things, constitution of India and that forms a major chunk of UPSC. So 25% of your will be done. And actually, just now I heard these are talking about be a public administration. No, be a public service. Be a public service. And I, I am very sure the subjects in that be a public service will be mostly suiting with your UPS examination. Because any courses of this kind will have the fundamentals of all subjects in the beginning. In engineering also, in the first year, you learn the basic chemistry, physics, mathematics, like that. Any BA course, you have to learn the fundamentals of all these things. So, do those things, enjoy. And now, let me give some space for you to ask doubt. We exactly strike on the points where students fail, ensure that they do not happen. Remaining things they have to work hard. What can we do? We found right material like mothership, right classes. We cannot do the exams. We give feedback. For example, in UPS, one important thing is answer writing. Though you have good knowledge, if you have poor answer, you cannot win. I know students who have only average knowledge, 
but good writing skills they create the exam. So writing skills help improve. So we realize that and we focus on every week we give some essays, questions. After the write, we evaluate. In our institution, in academy, there are uh, separate team who evaluate the papers actually. Evaluate, give feedback. I, I felt that is more important than taking good classes. Taking good classes, okay? Like that you also work on those things. For example, this year, our, our students who got good ranks, Sai Ria, who got 24th rank this year, she has taken guidance from Mains interview. And there are some students who, whom I never saw, who have taken online guidance from our academy, online. I would not say they got rank because of our academy. Definitely, they work hard from their place. They might have some mentors. But what guidance we give to them online for the prelims, mains interview helped them to track their rank. So these days, preparations become very simple. Wherever in India, you can get trained in online, offline. You can take some guidance from here, some from YouTube channels, learn yourself, write exams. You can track the examination. 